What do we have here? We have a collection of ball joints. Here is a uh, Moog, and uh, you can't really see it, but it's got a ton of play. Uh, this is a lower ball joint for a IFS Forerunner or pickup. This is a lower 555 Duralast one from, uh, from AutoZone, and uh, you can't see it either, but it's got play. And here is a Moog upper one, and uh, doesn't have any play yet, which is amazing because the boot is torn after very few miles. Now you may have seen the video I posted, I think over the summer, of uh, me replacing the ball joints with Moog ones um, in this Forerunner, and they didn't last very long, the Moog ones. Uh, so I went to, I bought some Seeky 555 ones from AutoZone, which are actually pretty cheap, so, uh, and they lasted a lot longer than the Moog ones, but they've gone bad too. So I'm going to jack this up, show you what we got here. These are from, these are from the passenger, from the driver's side. Um, I just replaced these two with Toyota ones on the driver's side. This is a, a Moog one that I've had for a while that I replaced with the 555. Um, in the fall. So now we're doing back to Toyota. Costed a little more, but uh, the original ones lasted 300,000 miles. So I figure if I buy them again, I'm good to go for a long time. Because these aftermarket things just uh, don't work very well. Back to work on that jack here. Let's see what we're what we're messing with. Alright, let's see if I can get this ready to show up on camera. The Moog upper ones don't actually have any play, but uh, the the boots are both torn on them, and that didn't take very long to happen. Uh, and the boots are actually fine on these 555 ones, but they're uh, it doesn't matter because they have play. All right, so I guess we'll put it back down on the ground, loosen the lug nuts, and uh, put in some new ball joints. Back my forerunner. Oh, I can't let you guys see all this stuff, all these new parts. I have. So I don't give away my new next videos. Back here, beneath all sorts of other stuff, I have my genuine Toyota toolkit, and inside of it, some genuine Toyota tools. Namely, this one for moving the center caps. There it is. This is, uh, you can get these things off without breaking them. Usually you can get them off with your hands, but these have got a bunch of dirt in them, so. Just pry them a tiny bit there. And they come off. There. So we got the wheel off, unbolted the shock, and uh, I'm going to do the lower ball joint first. Um, pretty much all I'm going to do. So I get that cotter pin out of there. So the first thing I'm going to do is get that cotter pin out of there, loosen up those bolts. Uh, I have a bolt in there, or a socket, I'm sorry, holding the suspension up slightly. That makes it so that I have more room to work.
I got the old one here. Time for the new. There's that brand new Toyota one. Got a little T stamp on it there. Here's the Toyota bag. New castle nut and, and uh, cotter pin. So let's grease this guy up. I'm just going to grease up this machine surface so it doesn't get seized onto the knuckle and then uh, stick it in there. Now I gotta do this upper one, which is not as fun. Because I got to get to that castle nut and to do that, the brake line's in the way, so I gotta remove the brake line, but it's hard line, so I gotta take off these bolts, which, uh, uh and I gotta take off the caliper too, so, not fun. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Now these Toyota ball joints have these little studs pressed into them. Well that works good if you don't have a spacer lift and I suggest you leave them in there. Um, but I do have a spacer lift so I need to knock those out. So what I do is I grab a 13mm uh, socket, stick it right there, and just hammer on it. Now I just take my spacer, my ball joint, stack them, and stick them back up in there.
Alright, so we got everything back together. Let's see if we can find any play.